Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video, and today I want to talk to you about why I think the Nikon D850 is one of the best cameras on the market for wildlife and nature photographers. So today we're talking about the D850, and I've been using the camera for pretty much a year now, and I wanted to give you some thoughts and feedback of using it out in the field and I didn't want to do that before I'd had a proper chance to really test it and put it through the paces. You know I didn't want to give you my review after a week or something like that because what use is that to anyone? So I've had it in the field, you know I've had it in the rainforest, I've had it in the UK, all over the place. So I wanted to give you my thoughts, feedback and why I think this truly is an exceptional camera for wildlife and nature photographers and especially those who want to be creative with their images. Now before we get started on this, I mean there's so many of you who've been fantastic over the year uh, watching my content but there's a load of you who aren't subscribed. So if you're not subscribed and you want loads of wildlife photography content and stuff like that, just drop a subscription down below and you know like content and stuff like that. It really helps this channel um, and over the next year I'm looking forward to adding a boatload of new stuff here um, to help you guys out and to showcase some equipment as well as techniques, info, loads of different stuff. So yes, please join me on the journey. So let's get back to this camera. Now, the Nikon D850 is a camera that I've actually had quite a lot of questions about because people are like, Tom, why'd you choose the D850 over something like the D5? And it's because in reality, the D850 offers me a lot more in terms of features, performance, and, and things that actually benefit me as a photographer that I see over the D5. I mean, I know the D5 has a really good build quality and the fact that it has stunning ISO capabilities, but in reality, do I actually need some of those features? The frames per second, not majorly. The ISO performance, well, I don't need to push anything past 10,000 really, because usually I wanna shoot in the best light. And the build quality of the D850 is still absolutely extreme. And I've tested it over the last year and it is incredible. So again, it's something that doesn't draw me to that camera. You know, as an all round camera, if you're someone who's shooting sport, you need those high frames a second to get small birds in flight, it might be a camera for you. But for me, the things that I look for are ultimate quality. I want the fantastic best dynamic range and detail that I can get. And the D850 offers me so much more in terms of that than I would have got with the D5. So let's talk about the D850. Now, it's a 45 megapixel camera, um, full frame sensor. Um, it offers seven frames a second or nine frames a second, depending on the battery system that you are using. Um, it's a fully weather sealed uh, body made out of magnesium. And to be honest, it's a really high performance camera that has been dialed in by Nikon um, to give, in reality, I think, the best of both worlds in terms of everything that this camera offers. And I'd liken it to another camera, the F6. The F6 is a camera that quite often people forget about. They talk about the F4, the F5, but it really is like the, the final hurrah of a film SLR for Nikon. You know, the ergonomics, the performance, everything about it has been built so well. And really, there's only one problem with the F6 that's kind of similar to the D850 that we'll talk about later, but largely all around, if you want a quick take home from this, it's a flipping brilliant camera. And the 850 is exactly the same. Now, the basis of the camera, you know, I talked about that 45 megapixel sensor, and that's something that really attracted me to this. Um, coming from a D810, that 35, that 36 megapixels was wonderful, but that jump up in resolution, offers you the chance to get the most detailed and beautiful files. When you take these onto the computer, you dive in, you see that detail, you can see every hair, you can see every little piece of detail when you get the technique right. Um, and that's something we'll talk about in a second, you have to get the technique right. But the files that come out are just gorgeous. You know, the dynamic range that comes off them, the ability to work with them in post-process is immaculate. And they are definitely the best files that I've ever, ever seen out of a camera. Um, they are large, you know, 45 megapixel raw files are large and you're gonna need a lot of storage for it. But I think it's a worthwhile trade-off for the quality that you get. Now that quality, it has to be said, that you have to have the technique for it. Um, 45 megapixel is an absolute punisher in terms of making sure that you're dialed in and you're getting everything right. If you use a shutter speed that's too low, you know, say you work with a 300 mil and you're trying to handhold at 300th of a second, you're gonna see a lack of sharpness in your images. You have to pretty much double any shutter speed to get it within the focal range to make sure you're gonna capture that full sharp image. And that's not a problem, you just have to dial your technique in and get it and improve it. And that's something great about this camera, you know, because this camera is really gonna help you dial in and improve your photography, nail down that technique to make sure you're getting the best files possible. So I don't see that much of a too much of a problem. Now, if you're someone who shoots in low light all the time, you know, you wanna try and handhold at those lower shutter speeds, then yes, 
A lower resolution camera might be helpful, a D5, etc. could be useful for that stuff. But for me, I'm always looking to shoot in the best light, best conditions to get the best images I can. And really the quality is why I wanted this camera. So in addition to the quality of the sensor and the files that come out of it that just still blow my mind, let's talk about the other performance issues of this camera. And let's start with autofocus because as wildlife photographers, we know it's so important. And the autofocus on this is, it's pretty immaculate. You know, it's the same module you get in the D5, um, an edited version for the D500, but you know, the focus points, they track, they pick up, they lock on extremely quickly. The autofocus tracking modes work phenomenally for birds in flight, stuff like that. And the single point autofocus is extremely good at pinpointing focus and getting it right every time. In low light conditions, it focuses down to like minus four EV, something like that. And there's times when this camera's focus and I can't even see what it's focusing on. That really is testament to how good this is. Now, of course, there are certain things that are lacking. You know, we don't have the phase detection that we have in some cameras that offer great video autofocus and stuff like that. But for me, as a primary still shooter, the focus is more than good enough that any fast action, anything like that, it locks on, it nails it, it gets it right. What more can you ask for, really? Now, in addition to the speed of the AF, of course, the speed of the camera is very important for wildlife photography. People kind of get hung up on frames a second, but there are times when it is useful. And this offers seven frames a second or nine frames a second, depending which batteries you're using. If you're using the internal batteries, uh, the standard ones that come with the camera, you're gonna get seven frames a second. That some people might say is a little lacking, but to be honest, when you're shifting 45 megapixels worth of data at seven frames a second, it is a pretty impressive feat. And largely that is down to the fact that we have the XQD card. Um, these introduced on the T850 um, and the other performance cameras that Nikon offer just improve so much about that performance. The buffer speed, everything like that is amazing. I've never had a problem where it's right into the card and I've got locked up. I mean, I'm using the Pro Sony cards, the 440 read, 400 write speed cards. They're expensive, but they're very, very good. Um, and in the time using it, even when I've been shooting sequences of images, I've never had an issue of the camera locking up. Um, I do only write to the primary card because I want to maximize on speed. I know some people want that redundancy, so they want to write to two. You'll probably see more of a speed reduction there. But for me as a performance camera, works absolutely fine. No problem with the XQDs, very, very good indeed. Now to improve the performance even more, you can of course add the uh, D5 batteries to this camera. Um, you know, it's a bit of an upgrade and expense and I haven't done it yet, but I'll probably will next year. Gives you longer battery life um, and also gives you a higher frames a second. We'll come back to battery life in a bit. In terms of the ergonomics of the camera, it's a pro Nikon. You know, it's exactly what you expect. You can get and access every key feature on the outside of the camera, and that's exactly what you want from a pro body. You know, the thing is, people talk about professional cameras just for the kind of improvement in their sensor, you know, speed, whatever, but the ergonomics and the ability to access features without taking your eye from the viewfinder is one of really the biggest benefits of these cameras. Being able to have a button that is programmable for pretty much every feature is so useful for when you're in the field, and especially once you've got everything dialed in to exactly how you want it. Um, I've got a link to the video of how I actually set up my camera, and I'll put it up here or down in the description. You know, once you've got it dialed in, it is just a tool that you get very used to using. And if you're someone coming from any other Nikon camera, you're gonna find pretty much everything in exactly the same place. The only movement is the ISO button and one of the addition of the info buttons on the back. That's pretty much it. Everything else is exactly where you'd expect it to be on a Nikon, and that's exactly what I want. Now, talking about ergonomics, of course, we've got to talk about the build quality, and I can absolutely testament that build quality is excellent, just like every other professional Nikon DSLR. This one is built fully of the magnesium outer body chassis. Um, I've had a few upgrades that make it even more kind of invincible out in the field. You've lost the pop-up flash that some people are a little bit annoyed about, but to me, I don't really mind. You know, it just adds that extra level of weather sealing on the top, don't have a crack that runs around anymore. Um, the whole body is completely solid, you really can't feel it. Um, I've knocked it, you can see I've got like a mark along here, um, actually got a machete mark all along the back. Um, and it's taken some bumps, you know, I've dropped it a couple of times, banged it, it's still absolutely fine. And, and it's so important, you know, there's bits of sand here where I've had it on the beach and stuff, but it's a professional camera and it has to work like that. And I'm not worried ever about taking it out into the field and putting it 
to the test. It's been in the snow. You guys saw the video where I was using it out in the snow. Um, and it's, it's never been an issue. Even in the rainforest, the humidity, um, the eyepiece doesn't kind of fog up. That again is, is really, really good. It's just these little features that out in the field, I'm really happy with. You've got the new light up buttons that if you're doing kind of night stuff, you can see them in a hide, they're all lit up, that's great. And just little things like that have improved over the camera. The grip's nice, I like it. Some people think it's a bit deep, but personally, I think it's really, really good. Um, and one thing that's nice is the grip. Um, like some cameras, when you have a grip on them, they kind of don't lock perfectly, but it's so solid. It really does feel like one um, entire camera that I really like. I add the grip because, you know, that extra weight and the size is really good with balancing long lenses. And I think one of the negatives people will talk about this camera is the fact that it's still quite heavy in an era where mirrorless is coming into its own. Um, the weight, as much as most people don't want it, is really handy if you work with long lenses to balance it out and make it more comfortable for holding. Um, kind of seems counterintuitive, but actually an extra bit of weight at the back makes it much easier to use a long lens uh, than having a small fiddly camera and um, maybe a tiny little mirrorless on the back of a big 300 2.8 is never going to work. And this makes it really comfortable to use out in the field. So overall, the ergonomics are excellent. The door's a bit annoying. Like I do wish they'd put the lock back. Um, the 300 used to have a little button that you press to open it. Be nice to see that come back, just that added bit of protection. But you know, I haven't knocked it open once, so I don't think it's gonna be an issue. I just think it's kind of in the back of my mind that we used to have it, and it would be nice to have it back. But you know, overall, excellent, and I've gotta mention the viewfinder. When you use a camera every day, and you're looking through the viewfinder, this huge prism is just wonderful. You know, it makes looking at the images you're composing so much nicer. It's bright, it's really um, full. You can see the whole image, it's 100% viewfinder. It's lovely to work with. Works really nice with glasses, stuff like that. Haven't had any problems. Um, and you know, the round viewfinders on these pro level Nikon cameras, it's just such a massive upgrade. Um, and yeah, really, really good quality indeed. So that's the ergonomics. Well, let's talk about the camera in use out in the field and kind of its practical applications. Well, we've already talked about autofocus and that being super fast, snapping on, locking on in any conditions. Um, the sensor just produces those wonderful files when you get it right. Um, but then other kind of parameters, ISO performance has again been improved over the D810. That's great. Um, we've got a couple of extra stops at the high end. Um, and they're useful, you know, if you're shooting in lower light conditions or you want to maintain those high um, kind of shutter speed to make sure you get those sharp images, it's really, really nice. But what I really like is ISO 64. Um, added as native to the D850, and it's so useful. I use it all the time. If I wanna shoot panning shots when the light is maybe a little bit too bright, or of course, if I wanna use wide open apertures in bright sunshine, I can dial down to ISO 64 and use it to accentuate that depth of field and use different creative effects. I think that's the thing about this camera. It is a performance camera that offers great quality, AF and everything like that but it also adds some extra tweaks that allow you to be more creative. The ISO low is far more useful than that extra stop of high to me because I'm not just gonna work in a random dark forest trying to get a late night badger picture. It just won't look as good as one in the perfect light. So that's not really what I work towards. But being able to use that low ISO to make something a bit of a different image um, when there's bright sunshine and, and customize and be more creative with my conditions is far more useful. And I really like that about this camera. Additionally, of course, Nikon with the D850 upgraded the video capabilities. Um, we've got 4K, we've got 120p HD, uh, we've got focus peaking only in HD. And it's nice to see these upgrades in terms of the video features. We still lack video autofocus because of course we've got no phase detection on the sensor itself. But to be honest, as a primary still shooter, I don't really mind. Like I'm probably gonna pick up a Z6 in the future, Z6 um, for video, for doing this channel, everything like that. So I'm not really worried about it. As a primary stills camera, it is fantastic. And so the video features, as much as they're great addition, um, they're not really why I would buy this camera. Um, for me, it's a stills focused camera. Let's talk about some of the down points of the D850. And to be honest, there's only really two, well, maybe three that I can think of. Back to my comparison with the F6. The F6 is all round brilliant camera. Pretty much everything about it, other than one thing. And that is its battery life. Now the F6 uses these silly lithium ion batteries instead of AA batteries that makes it a bit annoying to use out in the field. And the D850 is all round a brilliant camera, 
But the battery life is certainly something that is not as good as we've seen on previous models. The D810 had fantastic battery life. It just seemed to just go on forever and ever. You know, one battery would last like a week at a time, stuff like that. This, you know, you're gonna get through that battery in a day. Like a day is hard shooting. You're gonna see that battery drop down a lot quicker. But then again, you're processing so much more with this camera. You've got the higher frames a second, you've got it shifting more data, you've just got it doing more stuff. So it's not really a shock that it's requiring more battery power. And you know, at the end of the day, you can just carry a spare. I mean, I know they're like 70 quid, but it's worth it because the quality you get for that reduction in battery life is, again, just worth every moment of it. It doesn't really matter. The D500 has slightly reduced battery life. And I'm sure when I've got the D5 batteries in it, it's just gonna go on and on and on. So. We won't worry too much. Again, similar with the F6. No one didn't buy an F6 because of the battery life. So what else is kind of a negative? Well, it's slightly heavier than some other cameras that are now available. But again, I think it's actually a benefit when you're using long lenses. Um, it's expensive. I mean, and that's really what it comes down to with the 850. It's a three and a half thousand pound camera. And it's not really a three and a half thousand pound camera because if you had the grip, it's basically another 500 pounds here. You're talking a 4,000 pound camera, and that's just the body. The thing with the D850 is that to get the best out of it, you have to have the system in place. And I talked about this in a, in a past video, I'll stick it somewhere. You know, the D850 demands the best from everything you do. Your technique, your lenses, just everything that you have and work with, it will demand the best from. So if you don't have the 24 to 70, 70 to 200, those tops pro lenses, the fast primes and stuff like that, and you try and put lower grade lenses on this camera, you're not gonna get the best out of it. That would completely defeat the point of buying a 4,000 pound camera if you don't get the best out of it. Like what's the point in having that gorgeous 45 megapixel camera, that wonderful sensor, that incredible dynamic range, if your lenses aren't performing up to the standard of the camera. And so for some people, it's probably not the right investment because if you don't have the lenses, it's probably not one to go for. And of course, if three and a half thousand pounds is out of your price range anyway, don't even think about it because there's better investments that you can make. But if you, like me, are a long-term Nikon shooter, you've got a boatload of lenses, you're a professional, you've been working for ages and the, your camera is your livelihood, then the D850 is phenomenal. It works brilliantly, performs in the field, and the quality of this camera with the tiniest of kind of like small negatives is just exceptional. I really think this could be one of the best cameras Nikon has ever produced. And for wildlife photography, especially for the creative wildlife photographers, it's fantastic. I know that those shooters who shoot small birds, stuff like that, who need that, you know, ultra fast frames per second might be suited better by the D5. If you shoot in low light, all the time, again, you might be suited better by the D5, but as an all-round photographer, if you shoot landscapes, more environmental portraits, high-end portraits where you want that maximum detail, and you do a lot of different kinds of shooting with different styles of lenses, I just think the 850 right now is one of the best cameras on the market for wildlife photographers. The autofocus, performance, frames per second, everything combined makes a camera that I am looking forward to using for not one, two years until they're replaced, but you know, a good five years because I can't really see much more that I'm gonna need from a DSLR in the future that's gonna make me go, I just don't want my D850 anymore. So this thing, as much as it cost an arm and a leg to kind of bring it into my kit, is worth every single penny. And over the year, I've got so many images that I've been happy with with it that I'm really just stoked when I dive into those files yeah, it's it's pretty damn good. Now, that's pretty much it for today. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like below. If you've got any thoughts, questions about the Nikon D850, drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And as always, if you've got any wildlife photography questions, drop them down there as well and I will be sure to answer them. Um, join me soon for more wildlife photography content. And just thank you to all of the guys who've been watching my videos, um, you know, commenting, stuff like that over the last year. Really, really does mean a lot to me. Um, and as always, if you're not subscribed, please, subscribe helps this channel out um, and just you know is a real kind of nice nod to me loads more to come in the future 2019 is going to be big i'm going to be spending a lot more time investing in this channel um, with loads of stuff for you guys so please join me then but until then enjoy shooting get out find some wildlife and uh, join me in the next one